Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lauren, and this is your virtual tour of Body World in Amsterdam, brought to you by Tickets Awakening Weeks. For those of you who don't know, Tickets Awakening Weeks is a six week celebration of the reopening of museums and attractions in six countries around the world. The venues participating in Awakening Weeks have worked day and night to reimagine their experiences and introduce new hygiene measures to make it safe for you to visit again. And they're also rolling out the welcome mat for those of us who aren't able to travel yet with online experiences just like this one. So before I hand over to our presenters for this afternoon, there are just a couple of logistics I'd like to share with you. If you have any questions for the presenters, you can submit them through the Q&A box in the lower section of the Zoom window. There'll be a Q&A at the end of the tour as well, so please feel free to send through your questions and we'll try and answer as many of them as possible at the end of the session. You can also upvote, your, upvote certain questions by giving them a thumbs up and that way we can ask the best, the best questions first. And um, remember that this is a Zoom webinar, so your camera will not be on, um, but you can use the chat to communicate with fellow attendees as well as the speakers. Um, so please share where you're from, um, where you're joining us from, or your reactions during the session by using the chat. Um, you can make sure that you, if to do this, just make sure that you select all panelists and attendees when sending your messages so everyone can see them. If you have any technical difficulties, you can use the chat to send a message to just, just to all panelists to let us know and we'll try and help you out. Um, and if you're having trouble with audio, often leaving and rejoining um, is an easy fix. Finally, we're recording this presentation and we're going to be sending it to everyone who registered for the presentation in the coming weeks. And without further ado, I'm happy to hand over to our hosts for this virtual experience, Sydney and Victor, who are going to transport us to Body World. So Victor, please take it away. Hi. Hello, my name is Victor. This Hello. is my colleague, Sydney. Uh, we are now uh, at the start of the exhibition, Body World's Happiness Project on the sixth floor. Uh, Body Worlds is located uh, right between Central Station and Dem Square. In we're an anatomical exhibition. Uh, we have over 200 uh, specimens of real human body parts uh, between. Uh, and um, what we want to show to you is like an anatomical, like walk through the human body, like an anatomy book. Uh, due to the coronavirus outbreak, there we have taken some. Uh, we have taken a lot of measures actually to uh, protect both our employees and our visitors. Um, and we'll be giving you a quick uh, tour of our exhibition through some highlights of the exhibition. Um, so if you come along with me, I'll show you to, uh, the first part of the exhibition. All right, this, uh, this floor focuses mostly on the nervous system of the human body. And the first part that I want to show you is actually a very special part of the exhibition. It's actually the only um, specimen which still has a skin on and you can still recognize features and you could probably identify the person if you knew him. Uh, you can clearly see how the tongue is uh, sort of uh, situated inside the mouth, how much uh, room it takes up. The nasal cavities, they are actually very big. They're about like almost the size of a knuckle. Um, yeah, it's quite a beautiful sight to see here. I'd like to uh, um, move on to, I guess, the next part of the exhibition where uh, my colleague uh, Sydney will tell you more about the process of plastination and how we have prepared all these bodies uh, like this one over here. So if you come follow me down these stairs. In this part of the exhibition, we see a lot of human bones and actually what gives uh, our body rigidity uh, so that we don't all fall into sex of blubber. Um, my colleague is right at the end of this floor. And she'll tell you something about the process of plastination, how we keep all these bodies preserved for such a long time. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, as uh, Victor said, my name is Sydney. And um, all the bodies in our exhibition are actually real human bodies, which is pretty unique for, uh, yeah, for just a normal exhibition. Uh, and we would like to show you a little bit how they did it. In Germany, there's the Plastinarium, and there they preserve all the bodies for us with a specific donor program. Uh, the first step is embalming. They actually put um, a formalin solution in the body. So the body actually doesn't, um, yeah, 
get killed by bacteria or uh, other chemicals. Uh, after that, they dissect the body into what they want it to be, like uh, they want to remove specific organs or they want to show specific uh, parts of the body. After that, they put it in an acetone bag. Um, the acetone will actually make sure all the fat and the water will come out. Then we'll go to the forced impregnation with, um, with plastic, actually. It's a, diff a liquid polymer. And because they put all the acetone in, they removed all the acetone, they removed all the fat and the water with acetone. And in this step, they actually remove all the acetone and put plastic instead. Um, so you can imagine water is 60% of the body and they remove everything and put plastic in. So it actually stays uh, stronger and it won't, um, yeah, won't decay. Then we go into the positioning. The body is actually positioned into what it should look like in the exhibition uh, for the final project product. And then they uh, go to the last step and that's curing. They actually put, uh, it's done with different kinds of ways, so depending on what kind of plastic they use. They can use a gas chamber, uh, they use specific lights like UV lights or um, yeah, different ones and they can use heat. So put it in like a large oven and make sure it all gets hard. So all the bodies in the exhibition are actually, they cannot move or anything. And that's just to keep everything safe. Okay, uh, so that's the plastination project uh, product all completed. And I'm gonna give you back to my colleague, Victor, and he will show you the rest of the exhibition. Uh, so uh, we're going to walk quickly walk through the next uh, floor. The next floor's theme is actually circulation. If you follow me down the stairs, uh, you may notice uh, these artworks that you can find throughout the entire museum, uh, through the entire exhibition. These have been specially made uh, to accompany the theme of the happiness project. Loads of our visitors love them uh, and they are mostly just very inspiring and quite yeah, nice quotes that you can maybe take away. Uh, once you've seen this exhibition. Very unfortunately, due to the coronavirus, we've had to uh, close down the part uh, where the visitors can go ride on our swings. This is like a very popular part of the exhibition. You, you guys have no idea how often our, uh, <laughs> our guests uh, want to go on the swing. You can also quickly glimpse at the uh, blood vessels inside the human body just the vast amounts of blood vessels inside. Um, we'll see some more later on. Uh, and it's quite an easy, actually quite an interesting exercise to think of how they actually created these exhibits. Um, I'll spoil that later. Uh, for now, I guess you can think about it yourself. We'll move on to the next floor. So, so on the next floor, uh, next floor's theme is actually respiration and digestion. My colleague Sydney will show you something interesting uh, about the human lungs, um, which well, you can see it already over there. Maybe you uh, already noticed a big difference between the two specimens we have there. If Sydney, take it away. Hi, welcome back. Um, we actually have two different lungs here. We have the healthy lungs and the smoker's lungs. These are also sometimes known as the COPD lungs because um, a lot of people who have COPD have a history of smoking. Um, there's a really big difference, of course, with the color. The, no the healthy lungs are really light. You still have some dark spots. Sometimes it's just um, the fuels in the air or smoking with other, like if people are other people smoking in the room. Um, like um, we have the smoker lungs, they're a lot, a lot harder. Here you can see they're really spongy and the smoker's lungs are really like smooth and they're even shiny. Um, that's just mostly because there's so much tar in the lungs and they just, there's just so much in the body, in the lungs. Uh, so it's actually harder for people to breathe. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Sometimes we get these out in the exhibition so people can feel the bodies um, like today. Um, it's really cool because 
you don't these are organs they're normally in the body you don't see them and it's just really cool to have these experience to actually feel like how soft it is and to see the inside of the lungs normally there's of course a layer on top just like this one and also what you can really see here we have the heart still inside this lung is just so much smaller um, because the heart is on this side and it's just really cool that you can actually see it so yeah it's, it's just a really cool experience to see and to feel the bodies instead of just looking in a book uh, yeah what it normally looks like um, so yeah I think that's it for the smoker's lungs. Uh, Victor can take you back uh, and show you the rest of the exhibition and I'll see you at the Q&A. All right, so if you follow me along, we can actually uh, see the lungs in action uh, as they are situated inside the human body. Uh, one thing one might observe is that the lungs in this specimen are bright red while well over there they were white. Um, that's because color has been added in uh, to this specimen to sort of show what it would naturally look like. A uh, real lung, real organs in general, if you drain all the blood out of them, they almost always turn pale white uh, or actually any other color than red. Um, and you can actually see uh, a perfect example of how uh, yeah, well the lungs are necessary for performing this certain action. Um, if we come around the back, you can actually see very well uh, the spinal cord being uh, cut open. And you can actually see the nerves uh, coming down from the brain and branching off into the rest of the body. Um, as you know, listening to good music uh, is not only something that um, affects you mentally, it affects you physically. As you listen to uh, music or you play music, it has some sort of interaction with well, your body physically, as your breathing starts to change, your, how you feel starts to change. And this is another example of how happiness and experiencing good things actually has a physiological change on the human body. Very beautiful specimen, um, because you can see it in its entirety. It's not just a small part. You can actually uh, see how many organs and organ systems come together to perform a complex task. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to move on to the next part of the exhibition uh, where we talk about the digestion. And the first thing uh, <laughs> that might be a bit shocking to see is this entire digestive tract. Just see how long it is and take a moment to realize that uh, when you are digesting your food, it doesn't all only happen in your stomach, which like is a common misconception. It all starts in the mouth where your uh, teeth chew the food where enzymes in your mouth are produced to break down the food as then you swallow it and it passes through the stomach and the acids break the food down even further. Then it passes through these long, <laughs> this long snake that is your darm canal and all the nutrients are just uh, extracted uh, slowly through, from out of there. And um, it is very, it's very cool to see the amount of blood vessels that you can find inside the uh, human digestive tract. Here's a small example of just how dense uh, the blood vessels are around your uh, intestines. And I mentioned earlier uh, that it's a very interesting uh, idea how they prepare these, um, these uh, exhibits. And I guess I want to spoil it for you now. So the first step is you inject all the blood veins with some sort of waxy substance. And once it turns hard, you know, it's there and you're pretty much done. And um, follow me. I actually see an even cooler example of this. So once the, uh, once the wax has turned hard and uh, has uh, completely solidified, you can then take the entire human body that you had before or like the, the organs and you use some sort of uh, acid or some sort of solution to dissolve all the uh, flesh away. And what you're left with is this beautiful, yeah, artery system and, and, and blood vessels that cover the human body. So that is actually the last part of the exhibition we wanted to show you. And um, yeah, we'd like to end our, uh, our tour here. Excellent. Thank you very yeah. much, Victor and Sydney. So we have a couple of questions for you from our audience members. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, they wondered how long the exhibition will continue for. 
Oh, oh yeah. Uh, the exhibition is not a temporary one. So as long as we don't go out of business, we're still going to be here. So let's hope that we'll be here for many years to come. And I uh, would love to welcome all who would like to visit. Okay. And then um, a very interesting question from Dave Blakewell. Was the sax player actually a saxophone player? Um, it's a really cool question. Uh, probably not, uh, because normally uh, they just get all the bodies and they have the whole like medical files, like they know everything about the bodies that come in and they see if they have a specific trait that makes it interesting to show in one of the exhibitions. Maybe he did do some maybe more cardio or they, his lungs were just really well to show in, in this piece. Uh, but it's not that likely that he's a saxophone player uh, when he was still alive. No. <laughs> As a follow-up question to that, how much do you know about the different um, specimens that you have? Do you have a lot of their backstories or is it an anonymous thing? No, they are pretty much fully anonymous. Only, apart from the very first exhibition that I, uh, first exhibit that I showed you, all bodies are pretty much completely anonymized. Only the first one where you can see the skin on the head is recognizable, but only if you have known the person. All these bodies are completely, yeah, we know nothing of their backstory, how they died, how they lived. That's, uh, yeah, that's all been, uh, been kept secret sort of to, for privacy reasons. Okay. Um, and then one of our um, audience members wanted to know if there's an exhibition about, or if there's part of the exhibition includes something about the reproductive system. Is there something like that in the exhibition as well? Uh, we do have that in our exhibition. We just chose not to show this for this video uh, because of course it's a really, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a fragile topic in different cultures. So um, it's definitely something we show in our exhibition. And if you would love to see it, uh, definitely come by. Yeah, you'll have to go and visit Body Wars yourself to see that one. Um, so one of the other questions that we have is how many different individuals bodies do you have on um, display in total? Um, so total bodies, uh, we don't, I'm not sure, but we, know we have over 200 exhibits. So some of them are entire human bodies. Some of them are just isolated organs or organ systems, but there are 200, over 200 specimens inside the inside Body Worlds. Wow, over 200. Um, and then do you change the exhibits or is it generally the same and do you have the sort of one thing that people can come and see throughout the year? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, no, we, right now we have like a normal, our exhibition stayed the same for a few years now. We are working on some new pieces. Uh, so hopefully anytime soon we'll be having some something new to show everyone. Um, but yeah, it, that depends on uh, where the interest is heading. So yeah. Interesting. Um, and then someone's asked, how long does it take to prepare one of these bodies to be able to be, um, I suppose, part of the exhibition? Uh, it takes a long time. It takes about 1500 man hours to do one whole body from start to finish some of the steps like i like i said um with the with the board some steps like the acetone bath is sometimes six months um but if it's just one heart it could be two two months and if it's a whole body it can be six months so that of course um depends on how long it takes but normally a normal body would take like one and a half years to make from start to finish because they're like the chemical steps are take so long and also the dissecting takes long the positioning takes long so it's a lot of man work and yeah it takes a long time okay well oh. um and then we've got a few questions sort of related to how you get the bodies um that you have so are they is it people who volunteer and um, does the museum pay for them can you tell us a bit more i know you mentioned the donor program in the beginning can you explain a little bit more about that uh, yeah, the donor program is actually really simple. There, on the bodyworlds.com uh, website, there is actually a form that you can fill in and sign up as a donor. Um, although they mostly just accept because they've had a lot of people have seen the exhibition and they've had a huge flood of uh, of people wanting to donate their bodies, which is why they've sort of restricted themselves mostly to uh, a region of Germany. 
but it, it works as follows. There's just a form and there are a bunch, uh, you agree to very specific sort of conditions. So whether or not you want your body to be, uh, uh, what's called, to be shown in a sexual position, whether you want your sexual reproductive organs to be shown in particular. So there are a lot, there's a lot of, the person who donates their body has a lot of control into how their bodies are eventually shown in the exhibition. That's really interesting, actually. Um, another, qu another question from our audience is, uh, do you work with students to educate them about bodies? So I suppose, do you use the exhibition in an, in an educational capacity? Yeah, we definitely, we definitely have a few schools come in every year. Um, the schools from high schools will come here, but also universities will come here to like, learn all the anatomy. Of course, when high school students come, it's a lot more like the basic information, like what are these organs? And if universities come here, it's of course a little bit more in depth. Sometimes we also do tours. So that's really interesting to get more information to all the students. And it's a great way for students to learn the anatomy and not just to read it in a book. So yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the exhibits themselves. So you mentioned that there's quite a process in terms of, um, I suppose, creating the, or how long it takes to create um, the exhibits that you have. Once you have them, do you have to do anything specific to preserve them? Are they kept in special boxes? Is it like an artwork where you can't have a certain amount of light on them? Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, yeah, so because the bodies have been preserved and they're Pretty, there's no water there any, anymore. Everything has been replaced with some polymer or plastic. Um, there is no way for them to really degrade. Um, the only w once in a while we have a clean up, a cleaning crew come in who just clean all the dust and just uh, the stuff that settles on the bodies. But apart from that, it's really uh, yeah, hands off. We don't really need to do anything to keep them good. Okay. Um, and then someone's asked if there's, I think we've got a few sort of different body worlds around the world. So is, what kind of exhibition would someone see in London, for example? That's really difficult because all the exhibitions are different and we are really apart from all the other exhibitions. We don't know what they have in theirs. Um, but of course they have some pieces that are gonna be the same. Like if you wanna show a heart, yeah, you can find a heart that almost looks identical. Of course, it's from two different bodies and it's gonna look different, but mostly you can find some pieces that are really similar because those are just the basic pieces that they want to show the public. But like the full body pieces, the bigger ones, those are of course different in ex every exhibition because they're not making multiple pieces of that. So it's gonna be different. And of course we have the happiness project. So that's gonna be, uh, more uh, on the yeah we have more information on how happiness reflects on the body and there are also different body worlds around the world that have different themes so they're showing different scientific research so yeah can you tell us a bit more about the happiness project I think sort of how other pieces sort of show how happiness affects the body um, yeah um it's it's hard to uh, to sort of go into the subtlety subtleties like real quickly, but yeah, we do uh, like the text everywhere in this exhibition. They always try to link um, happiness with some sort of physical uh, what's called phenomena. Uh, and when we just experienced, for example, the saxophone, there is text explaining how uh, playing music has uh, an effect on your hormone levels. We have also uh, shown downstairs where, for example, we talk about reproduction, about having babies, how that has an effect on, on uh, your hormone levels and how that makes you happier. We have um, stories about um, coping with uh, neurological diseases, something like, uh, uh, what was it, Alzheimer's on the, on the sixth floor. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I don't know if that answers the question fully, but we try to incorporate how specific phenomena affect the body physically. Okay, so to truly experience it, you will have to go and visit Body Worlds in person if you can. Um, another question that someone had was the, if you have any pieces from the nervous system in particular in the um, exhibition. 
Oh, did you, did you hear that? me? Um, yeah, no sorry. problem. Uh, we do have those. We have them on the sixth floor. That's so difficult to make. It's it's such detailed work, and they actually get out all the bigger nerves from the body, and all the other organs and pieces from the body. They just remove around the nerves. So it's really interesting to see that we just have the brain and the nervous system and all the nerves. So it's definitely really interesting to see. Uh, and we have them upstairs, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I think this is quite interesting as well. Would you ever take the exhibition to other countries? Is it like, would you be able to transport um, the exhibits? I imagine that's a difficult thing to do. Um, I mean, we don't because we're just a permanent uh, exhibition in Amsterdam, but all the other body wash exhibitions, they do that exact thing. Uh, once the bodies, if you just uh, handle them carefully, they can be transported all over the world. These, uh, these things have been, as you say, shown in London, in, in Japan, in Germany, um, in Netherlands, uh, there have been as well. Australia. Australia, example. So yeah, uh, you can look out uh, if you happen to see a body rolls exhibition in your country uh, and it would definitely be worth the visit. Okay, um, and then another question from our audience. Uh, do you have other interactive activities in the exhibition? Um, so aside from, for example, letting people touch the lungs, are there other ways in which people can interact with your exhibition? Yeah, we do have a few interactive pieces. We have the um, we have the um, blood pressure mirrors downstairs, or upstairs, uh, but unfortunately now with the coronavirus we don't have them in use because of course it's not uh, as hygienic right now. And we have downstairs we have an in-body me meter. You can actually stand on some more of the scale and it will just measure out body fat, how much muscle, even in a specific limb, how much body fat or muscle there, there is. So it's really interactive and you really find something out about your body but of, co of course now with the coronavirus it's a bit more difficult these interactive pieces but we'll try our best to yeah, think of something new for us. <laughs> okay and then um, can you tell us who first came up with the idea of Body Worlds? What's the origin story of the um, museum? Uh, yeah you can do this one as well yeah. Oh sorry. Uh, uh, no, the inventor is actually Gunter von Hagens. Um, he's right now 75 and he's still working really hard to make new uh, innovations to the, pro to the process. Um, he was actually an anatomy teacher in Heidelberg in Germany and he actually uh, wanted to show his students how the bodies actually looked instead of just showing a picture. And he had an assignment to show a liver or a kidney. And he went to the butcher and he actually found out like, oh, I can slice something up really small, just like there. And I can show the inside of the organ. And he was just so creative and thinking outside the box and doing things no one ever did. And now there's so many people have seen the exhibitions and learned so much anatomy. It's, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, that's amazing. How old is Body World, actually? Do you have an idea of that? Well, our exhibition is now six years. And um, yeah, the invention was maybe around 1980. I'm not, I'm not sure about the specific uh, time, but it, it, it's fairly new still. So. Okay. And then um, could each of you tell me your favorite part of the exhibition, your, the thing that you find most interesting? <laughs> Um, it's a bit of an iffy subject, but I think uh, the development of the human body is very interesting, like in the uterus. So you can see the actual uh, fetus develop from like a few humps of cells, like wee big, uh, through like uh, different stages of, uh, of prenatal development. And you can actually see the for formation of like this tiny clump of cells uh, growing bigger, bigger and bigger and actually turning into a human being. Um, it's a bit, maybe, maybe it's a bit, uh, I guess, disturbing for some people to see, but I, in my honest opinion, I think that's the most beautiful part. Super interesting. Yeah. It's and definitely, you... yeah, it's definitely a really interesting part. And, but my favorite must be on the fifth floor. And it's really uh, nice to see 
like how they do like a hip replacement or a knee replacement. My grandpa had both of the, both of those and it's just really cool to actually see what happened and what they did because normally you just see a scar on someone's body and now you can actually see like, oh, this is what they did inside the body. This is how it looks yeah, under the scar. So it, I think that's really, really cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, another question from our audience. Do you have any idea? Oh, sorry. Do you, either of you study anatomy or do you have a medical background? I, I study medicine right now. So I have a little bit of medical, uh, like anatomical background. Um, and I also went to Germany to do the plastinarium uh, for myself for two months last summer. So definitely some anatomical knowledge. But you? <laughs> I just study math. <laughs> 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 okay and then i think a good question to end off on um are any are you allowing visitors during the pandemic um or over the next couple of months can people come and visit you in person um oh, they definitely can you uh, we do ask you to uh, reserve your tickets ahead of time online although we do sell tickets at the door and um, most of the time we still let people in but just to avoid uh, some busy peaks here and there. We do sometimes just ask people not wait a few moments before they come inside. But if you uh, get your ticket ahead of time, reserve a time slot, reserve a specific uh, date, then uh, yeah, there's no reason uh, for you not to come in uh, as long as you obey our guidelines, Corona proof guidelines. Amazing. Thank you, Sydney and Victor, very, very much. Um, thank you to everyone who joined us for this Tickets Awakening Week's virtual experience. If you're based in the Netherlands, you can also experience the Netherlands Awakens Week in person. Visit tickets.com forward slash blog forward slash awakening dash weeks for information on all of our awakenings, awakening weeks around the world, including this one. Um, so you can go and visit Body Walls for yourself in person in Amsterdam. Um, thanks again to both Sydney and Victor for their spectacular presentation. Um, we look yeah, thank forward, you. Yeah, <laughs> we very much look forward to finding more ways to culture with all of you in the near future. We obviously have a host of other virtual experiences coming up over this week and then the course of the next two weeks. Please join us all for those. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.